video, I'm going to show you how we can determine the minimum KVA of a transformer based on the loads connected to that transformer. So let's take a look what we're dealing with here. We've got a dual winding, so we've got two on the high side, two on the low side. It's 280-480 volt to uh, 120-240 volt, again, depending on how we're connected. We've got the secondary side here connected as a three-wire circuit. I have connected to the loads. I have 8 kilowatts on this 120 volt side. I have 3 kilowatts on this 120 volt side. I have 15 kilowatts on this side, and I have 20 kilowatts on this side. Now, in order to determine the KVA of this transformer, or the minimum KVA that we have to have in this transformer, we need to figure out the current of each branch. So let's take a look what the currents are. We have an 8 kilowatt load connected to the 120 volts. You can see that because the load goes back on the neutral. So we take 8 kilowatts divided by the 120 volt coil there, and we end up with 66.7 amps going through this branch. This one, we have a 3 kilowatt load connected to the 120 volt coil. 3 kilowatts divided by 120 volts gives me 25 amps. Now this is the tricky one. We've got a 20 kilowatt load, but it is across. You've got two lines here, line 1 and line 2. So this is a 240 volt load. So I'm going to take 20 kilowatts divided by 240 volts. Don't forget that. Do not get caught in the trap of using 120 again. And you're going to get 83.3 amps. And last, and of course least, we've got this guy on this side, 15 kilowatts. Again, now he is connected to the 120 volt load because you're connected to the neutral there. 15 kilowatts divided by 120 gives you 125 amps. Now we've determined all the current going through each branch. We can determine what our line currents are going to be over here. Line one, let's figure out what it is up here. All I have to do is take this current and add it to this current and add it to this current. So 66.7 plus 25 plus 83.3 gives us 175 amps on this line. And then if we go down to here, we're just going to take the 83.3 amps and add it to the 125 amps, and we get 208.3 amps. Now, while we're at it, why don't we determine what the neutral current is? It's not really necessary, but it's just a good habit to get into. If I have 208.3 amps there, but I have 175 amps there, that means that I had the 208.3 traveling along here, and suddenly I have 175. Where did it go? It went along the neutral. And that neutral current is going to be 208.3 minus 175, which gives you 33.3 amps on the neutral. Now we're ready to determine the minimum KVA of this transformer. In order to determine the minimum KVA, what you have to look at is these currents here. I have 208.3 amps running along this winding, and I have 175 amps running along this winding here. To determine the minimum KVA, what you have to do is take the larger of the two currents. In this case, it is 208.3 amps. That means that this winding here has to be able to handle 208.3 amps across it. Now, when we're dealing with these dual winding transformers, these windings are generally equal. So we have to have this winding rated at 208.3 amps, which means that this one's going to be rated at 208.3 amps as well. That's what its rating is. Now, with this connection, we are only using 175 amps. So we have not exceeded the rating. That's the important part of this one here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 208.3 amps. We're going to multiply it by 120 volts because that's what the coil is. That will give us the KVA of one winding. And then we're going to multiply that by two because we have two windings. So in this case, 208.3 times 120 times 2 because of the two windings gives us 50 kVA. I know this is sounding redundant, but let me show you again. 208 across this winding, because that's the higher of the two currents, times 120 volts, and then we have to multiply that by 2 because we have two windings there, is 50 kVA. Now I know what you're thinking, or some of you might be thinking, is that, well, with transformers, power in is power out. So why can't we just add up all our powers, which is 46 kVA in this case, and say, okay, well, the minimum kVA that this transformer has to be able to handle is 46 kVA, right? Well, if we look at that, if we take that 46 kVA, that means that we have to split the kVA equally across each winding. Are you digging what I'm saying here? 46 kVA is for both windings here. That would give us 23 kVA on this one and 23 kVA on this one. Now, with this rating here, let's determine what the current is going through these windings, or what's the rated current that these, this transformer has to be able to have. 
So I take 23 kVA and divide it by 120 for this one, and 23 kVA and divide it by 120 for this one, and we're going to determine what the maximum current is that you could safely put through this transformer if this was a 46 kVA transformer. Okay, there we go. This one here, we get 23,000 divided by 120 gives me 192 amps. Over here, we have 23 divided 23,000 divided by 120 gives me 192 amps as well, obviously, because it's a dual winding transformer. Now, looking at here, I've got 192 amps. That means that this winding here is rated to handle 192 amps. I see this current up here is only 175. So you're thinking, oh, yeah, we can totally handle it. And yes, you can. This side definitely can. But if we look on this side, the 23 kVA, it can only rate it, it's only rated to be able to handle 192 amps. Well, what do we have going through it? 208. What's going to happen there is eventually you're going to let all the smoke out of those windings, and we call that kablazzle flam. It's not good for the transformer. You're overloading this winding, and that's bad. It will eventually burn out. So it is not 46 kVA. That is why we have to rate this transformer for 50 kVA so that this winding here can handle the 208.3, and that's the minimum kVA. You're not going to generally just kind of rate your transformer right to the minimum. You're going to get a bigger size than a 50 kVA because if I wanted to add anything else in parallel with this load, it's going to be a problem. But that's not our problem today. Our problem today was just to determine the minimum kVA. So remember, work out which each line current is. You're going to take the higher of the two line currents. You're going to multiply it by the winding voltage to get the kVA. And then you're going to multiply that by two if you have a dual winding transformer like this. And that will give you your minimum kVA for a dual winding transformer.